My name is Casey Dillon, and I am the Director of Investment Communications. I'm joined on the call by founding partner Patrick Sweeney and Managing Director Dana Diorio. On the call today, we will be reviewing the impact of the recent outbreak and spread of the COVID-19 virus on markets and the broader economy in general. We will be providing a few data points to give you some perspective. Financial markets across the globe have been impacted by the spread of the virus. However, this is first and foremost a health issue. And we at Symmetry want to encourage you all to take every precaution to protect your health and the health of your loved ones. For more than 25 years, we at Symmetry have approached investing on behalf of you, our clients, prudently and deliberatively based on the validation of evidence. This is not a platitude. It's a time-tested approach that served us well across decades of bear and bull markets, even, even a few black swan events. To gain some perspective from one of the architects and the stewards of that approach, I'd like to introduce founding partner, Pat Sweeney. Pat? Thank you, Casey, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to start today's discussion with a slide that uh, should speak directly to the title of today's presentation, a slide that gives you perspective. Uh, this is my 36th year in this industry, and I, I really never counted all the uh, bear markets that I've been through in, in various types of securities, um, but it, it certainly goes beyond a dozen. So uh, I don't mean to sound sanguine. I don't mean to sound as though this isn't uh, an important, uh, even scary event that we're all going through. Uh, however, uh, we've been through this before in the terms of the market. Uh, as Casey alluded to, uh, what's different about all this is this is a health scare, a pandemic, and uh, we want you all to uh, always get your information from a reliable source, a reputable source, and, and speak to your doctor. We're going to talk about your money today. And uh, if you take a look at this bull and bear markets and recessions slide going back to 1926, the first thing that jumps out at you is that, number one, bull markets last far longer than bear markets in terms of duration. Uh, that's always been the case, uh, and that is really just uh, endemic to uh, a capitalist uh, free market society. A capitalist free market society dictates a positive return on the investor's dollar, or it cannot exist. So the second thing you should look at uh, in this particular slide is uh, that the peaks of the bull market uh, are far higher than the negative peaks of the bear market thus the positive return on capital. So let's look at uh, the last century. The growth of our economy as measured by GDP, the growth of our economy has averaged 3.3% over the last century. Stocks over that time period after inflation have averaged just 8.1%, just over 8% return. Now, intuitively, people might think that uh, if we're going into a recession, and we don't know if we are yet, there are plenty of bear markets that don't lead to recessions. But if we're going into a recession, because it certainly feels that way, that the stock market's going to do poorly. And uh, this is where intuition doesn't serve us well. Over the last century, we've had 21 years of recession, just about 19% of the time. And as you would expect, growth in the economy is negative, about negative 4.4% on average. However, stocks have returned positive 11% after inflation. That's 40% better during those recessionary years. And what does this tell us? Well, in order for investors to capture the return of the market, they must be in the market, or they must be able to get out before it drops and get back in at the bottom. It sounds like a great strategy. Uh, I don't know anyone who can do it. I don't know anyone who knows anyone who can do it, to borrow from Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard. What it tells us is the stock market is a forward-looking mechanism. The stock market is always looking to the future. And thus, when times are at their worst, at the bottom of a bear market, oftentimes during a recession, is when the market turns around. And no one's investing during those periods, except for those of us who are strategic and stay fully invested at all times. 
We saw it most recently in 2001 and again in 2009. Those invested through the bear market were served very well. So take from this slide some perspective in order to benefit from the stock market's returns, you need to be invested at the bottom. And that means invested through these times. The one way to make that palatable is broad diversification. Those of you on this call that are symmetry investors collectively own somewhere around 15,000 securities across 50 different countries, depending on your asset allocation. That's a broad, diverse, broadly diversified portfolio, and that is the best way to combat being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Thank you, Pat, for that great long-term perspective. I'd like to turn now to Tina Dioria, who heads up our investment and research teams. Tina, what are the recent market and economic impacts you and the team are seeing? Great. Thank you, Casey, and thank you everyone on the call for joining us and spending some time with us today. So I want to address um, really what we're seeing in the market. Symmetry's research team is obviously monitoring markets very closely and looking to understand what impacts the market volatility is and will have on our strategies and our exposures. And I think um, for the investors out there listening in, it might be good to just walk through some of the major impacts that we're seeing and, and what to be ex what we can expect from that. So first, let's just think about the stock market, which of course is uh, where the, the biggest focus is at this time. Um, really what you're seeing, decreased future profits is, is the concern there, higher required return, behavioral considerations. Let's just talk about that for a minute and what's, what we're actually seeing in a market like this and the volatility. There's basically two processes going on in the market right now. The first is a price discovery process, which happens every day in the market, volatile or calm. Market participants are basically buying and selling securities in a price discovery mechanism to say what should any particular security be valued at today. In a period like this, when you have a shock to the system like the coronavirus, what's happening in the markets with informed trading is that there's an effort to understand how the shock will impact future corporate earnings, future expected cash flows, as well as the likelihood of those cash flows coming through, which is essentially the required return, the risk that you're taking. And so where do we see impacts on that? Well, of course, supply chain impact, concerns that, you know, shutdowns in places like China and as it spreads across now to the Euro to Europe and the US and, and globally, what types of supply shocks will that create? As well as demand shock. You have people sitting at home, not going to the movie theater, not going to a restaurant. Um, you know, what will that do to demand? The price discovery process is taking place and trying to sort out what sectors, what countries, what securities will be most impacted by this. So that creates volatility in the market and potentially leads to higher required return, right? Because if I'm going to put my money at risk, it's very unclear which enterprises are going to be worst hit by this and how much and, and for how long. So I might require a higher return. The other process, of course, taking place in the markets is, is what's often referred to as the animal spirits part of this process, right? So you have informed trading that's seeking price discovery, and then you also have a lot of volatility in the markets that's simply created because, of course, behavioral impacts, right? You have people concerned, uh, they pull money kind of blindly, then, they, then, then you have a wave of folks saying, oh, this is probably a buying opportunity. I'm going to take my cash and put it back into the market. So you have both the, the standard price setting mechanism and you have a lot of behavioral volatility going on. And of course, when you put this together, it creates for extremely volatile markets. And we're certainly seeing that in measurements that we look at. A very standard measure is the VIX. And, and many people on this call maybe have heard of this, an index that measures market volatility. And, and market sentiment. And the VIX ha is trading at multiples of its average right now. So 
much higher volatility than we see in a normal environment. So first and foremost, what I would say is that it's important for symmetry and money managers to understand how this volatility, how this price setting mechanism is impacting our strategies and exposures. But it is a very volatile period to be trading into the market. And of course, as we always do, we would caution anybody who's seeking to trade in and out of the market at a time like this. Um, one way to think about this is that if you're making asset allocation decisions, that's generally something you do with conviction when you have when the market has conviction. And in a market like this, you're not you're not seeing conviction, you're seeing volatility. So let's talk about just a couple of the other specifics. Oil obviously is a place where we're seeing um, a big impact and that continues to be the case even outside of coronavirus. We had the breakdown in negotiations between Russia and Saudi Arabia that increased that volatility. So we're seeing that impact. Um, and energy in turn is uh, a big factor in high yield markets. So in terms of credit markets, fixed income, we're seeing in the high yield space additional volatility that's created in part and large part uh, by the energy sector. And that's coming from a lot of the oil concerns. And then government interest rates. You're seeing, as you always do, a flight to quality. You're seeing money flow to safe, quote unquote, assets. You're seeing spreads between safer treasuries and corporate bonds widen and this is to be expected because again any type of risk that you're taking in a market like this when price discovery has to determine what the overall impacts are going to be folks will require a higher expected return in a case like that so let's just move now so let's talk about then the direct economic consequences of this outbreak naturally we're talking about increased uncertainty and again we, and this is a, a key point that I kind of want to make to the folks on this call. When you're looking at markets that we're seeing today, looking at saying, is the, has the market found a floor? Are we to anticipate further, further reductions or is this a good time to get in? We would strongly caution against any market timing activity that you may be considering. Because market timing activity in a market like this, of course, it, market timing in any market is a difficult endeavor. In a market like this becomes very, uh, you know, um, really impossible, right, for, for anyone, money managers and investors alike. We are going to see disruption in global supply chains. That's not a surprise. And an important thing to understand about your symmetry portfolios is that they've been created to be an all-weather type of portfolio. So let me explain what I mean by that. There are many ways to approach capital markets. You can, you can move into certain sectors and out of certain sectors when you think those sectors will do well. You can move into certain countries and out of countries when you think those countries will do well. During a calm period, the risk of doing that may not be as pronounced because everything's sort of doing well, right? When the tide is high, all boats are floating higher. In a market like this, it's very difficult for anyone to say with certainty which areas will be hardest hit. If you had asked most folks a week or two ago, what area of the globe will be hardest hit by this, they might well have said China. I can tell you China's losses year to date in the stock market are about half what the US market has lost year to date. And so understanding and saying, where do we think we're gonna be at the end of this? Which economies are gonna be hit, worst hit? Which sectors are gonna be worst hit? Which securities are gonna be worst hit? Very difficult to do. The symmetry portfolios are broadly diversified across thousands of securities and globally, countries across the globe sectors across the globe. And while we think this is a, a solution for any period of time, it is particularly important in a period of time like this one, precisely because we do not know which economies, which sectors, which securities are gonna take the hardest hit. 
We can make conjectures. We certainly have information that tells us, okay, tourism, travel, this looks to be a place that's going to have some problems. Then again, we have aid coming, government aid to help certain sectors. So figuring out which is the place to be at the end of the day is, some, is everyone is working on and is very difficult to predict in advance. The symmetry portfolio is very much designed to diversify exposure across all of these things so that in a market like this, you will absolutely see losses because you will see generally across the board, securities will lose value in the volatile market but understand that you still own those shares. Until you sell the shares, you have not locked in that loss. And if you are diversified across as many components as you can be, then you are not taking the risk of being in the one place or the few places that end up being the hardest hit. And that's something that I can't stress enough about the value of diversification. In the last market correction that we had in 2008, there was a lot of media concern about diversification. It didn't really help. Everything went down. That's absolutely the case. Everything went down, but there were wide chasms between the worst performers and the best performers. And being diversified prevents you from having the risk of being that worst performer that doesn't come back. So decreased economic activity market disruptions, as I already mentioned. Now, I want to make um, a few statements here just about symmetry during this period and what the symmetry investment team does and how we look at markets. Obviously, symmetry monitors markets consistently. During a period like this, it becomes an even more scrutinizing effort, right? On a, very, on a daily basis, we are looking at market volatility. We are looking at trading conditions. We are looking at impacts in different areas of the globe, and we are looking at how all of these things impact our strategies and our exposures. So understanding and making sure that the diversification that we have built into these portfolios is working for us and that we are not having unintended concentrations or bets in areas that we think are going to in any way have an outsized impact on the portfolio. Again, if you're in the market in this period, you're going to feel the pain of it. The important thing for us is not to have concentration risk and to make sure that we're monitoring what's going on in these markets and how it's impacting on our exposures. So let's talk for a minute about what the investor's job is in a, in a market like this. Certainly, um, we, you know, Symmetry as a money manager has its job it's very important that we monitor markets and understand what's going on in your portfolios. But what does the investor need to do in a market like this? And I would say to you that there are two, two ways to, to go about this. One, you can consider what's going on in the market and make a decision about whether you think you need to act. We would strongly recommend that unless you have a personal change to your circumstances, that you keep a steady hand and hold steady. And I'll, I'll explain to you on this slide in a minute why. But let's first talk about what do I mean by a personal change to your circumstances. We're seeing, of course, economic activity being impacted sharply. We're seeing cases where businesses are struggling to maintain their, their workers. We have on this, many, many great symmetry clients are entrepreneurs terrific small business owners. These people, as a, as a general rule, are stoic. They kind of take a lot of the weight of the world on their shoulders and they press on. Here is what I would say to you. If you perceive in your job, or if you're a business owner and you're looking and saying, I think I, you know, I, think I can keep things going, but I, you know, I, we'll have to see if it gets worse, we could have a problem. What you should be doing right now is talking to your financial advisor about the potential, a contingency, if you would have to tap into your money. What your financial advisor can be doing now is research for you on ways that you would be able to, you, to tap into that money should you need to. For example, small business owners, there's a lot of relief being extended by states and the federal government. So your financial advisor can help you look into ways to get past this. They can look into if it, if, 
if it would turn out that you're saying, well, you know, I think I'm going to be okay, but there's a chance that I'm going to have to tap into my portfolio in the near future. They can look at can, what would be the analysis then on how much you could take. Perhaps you can take it from fixed income as opposed to equity, so you're not locking in losses. They can be doing that work ahead of time for you and being prepared with a plan so that in the contingency that you have to do that, they're ready. It's very important at this point to rely on your financial advisor and use them. This is what they're there for. They're your partner in this. You should not be alone in any of these decisions. And I will say to you that Symmetry has worked. I've been at Symmetry for going on 15 years, and we certainly work with many excellent financial advisors. These people are well-versed in how to handle situations like this and do financial planning for you in this type of situation. So I strongly urge you that if you have something in your personal situation that would imply you need to potentially use your money, take your money out early, now is the time to talk to your financial advisor about it. Now, barring that, if there is no change in your own personal circumstances, then I would say to you that during market volatility like this, we believe your best course of action is to stay the course and to hang tight. Why do we believe that? Because we've seen this before, as Pat started this call, market volatility happens. Every shock to the market is different for its own reasons, but at the end of the day, the productive capacity of our economy is still there. So the slide that you see in front of you is looking at the total US equity market, and it's looking at returns after market declines. So what you're seeing here is from July 1926 through December 2019. If I look at any all of the market declines of 10%, 15%, or 20%, and I look at the annualized return of the market after those declines, on average, you can see that the annualized returns are actually quite reasonable, right? Even after market decline. So 11%, 12%, 9%, 10 14%. These are the annualized returns that you're earning after market decline, even a 20% market decline. And you earn this by staying in the market and holding steady. Let's look for a minute now at a, a portfolio that's probably more representative of most of the people or, or many of the people, right, that we're probably talking to today. So a 60-40 balanced portfolio. Let's look at some of the other major uh, market shocks that we've seen in the last several years. So we're looking at the October 1987 stock market crash, August 1989, the U.S. savings and loan crisis. September of 98, the aging contagion, Russian crisis, the collapse of long-term capital management. We had the dot-com crash in March of 2000. We had the September 2001 terrorist attack, the September 2008 bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers, of course, the, the financial crisis in general. And then in August 2011, if we all remember the U.S. debt downgrade. So we've had some major, major shocks to our economy and to our market over the last several decades, and you can see that what happens in the market, what type of return do you get after these types of events? After one year, generally flat, maybe a little bit negative, in several cases actually positive. After three years, all were positive. After five years, all are significantly positive. We, we stress this information because in the moment, when you're, when you're watching your portfolio value decline, it's human nature, it's, it's, it's the expected reaction that you say, what can I do about this? Should I try to move out of it? But our strong belief is that history tells us that we're better off not, not moving, focusing on you know, what's important, right? Your health, your, your job, and kind of holding steady when it comes to your portfolio. Because again, productive capacity comes back and the markets move forward. I want to look at one more slide that sort of illustrates this point. And this slide is really talking to you about what happens when you miss strong market returns. Now, many of you, if you are paying attention to what's happening in markets right now, I'm sure you've noticed that there's a huge decline and then it's followed by a, a massive increase, right? So, so an outsized decline and then a, and then a big 
increase. And this is what happens in these types of markets. It's not unusual at all. When you have this type of market volatility, you have uh, panic selling, you have a wave of purchases as people come in and say, well, you know, that, that overdid it, or I, I see a chance to profit. So you're, you're, you're looking at very volatile markets. And what we find when we look historically at cases like this is that getting out and trying to say, well, I, I understand everything, but I'm just going to get out for a little while and then I'm going to get back in. The problem with doing that is that stock market returns are chunky. So you, you look at a stock market return, the, the annualized average return is something like 10% that you can get out of the stock market. So 10% per year is, is the average over time. Unfortunately, the volatility, even over time, forget a period like this, just generally speaking over long years, the volatility is significantly higher than the average. The volatility is something more like 18%. What that means is you don't get 10% a year, you get 20% and then maybe negative 15%, right? The same thing happens with daily stock market returns. So if your thought is, well, I'll just get out for a little while and then I'll go back in when I think everything's kind of calmed down. The problem with doing that is number one, you, you lock in the loss to the extent that you have it. And then you have to figure out when to get back in and missing the, the biggest days in the market really undoes your capacity to make up for the losses. The problem is it, it's not smooth how this volatility is. It, you know, it's not smoothed out, right? You're going to have chunks of up and down market, and then you have a period of time that kind of, you know, lackluster, et cetera. So that is what makes it so difficult to leave the market and come back in in, in a timing in a way that actually it helps your portfolios as opposed to hurts it. So just to help you orient to the illustration here, the annualized compound return on the S&P 500 from 1990 to 2018, about 9.29%. If you had missed the best day in the market, you would only be earning 8.87% over that same time frame. If you had missed the five best days, you'd be earning 7.75%. And if you'd missed the 15, 5.8%. In other words, the big days in the market are a huge driver to, to that long run return that you're trying to get. And trying to time it risks missing those big days. Thank you, Dana. So those are some point, excellent points. Uh, I, I guess I would uh, pause, a, or pause it a question uh, for you and, and Pat in particular, uh, you're, we're hitting folks with a lot of data, but really there's a lot of fear uh, for investors who are seeing their investments uh, drop. They don't know where the floor is. They're concerned about further drops and protecting themselves on the downside. There's concern uh, as people think about, should I go to cash to protect myself? I'm wondering, uh, Pat, if you can speak to the fear of that and, and help people sort of understand and put some perspective to all of the data that Dana has just shared with us. Absolutely, Casey. And and uh, we understand uh, those feelings. We've been doing this for a long time. Um, and uh, I was an advisor for, for many, many years and I've had these discussions with clients. So let me give you some uh, hard and fast advice out of the gate here, because that's what some people are looking for. If you can't sleep at night, then you should consider lowering your exposure to stocks. If you're 60 or 70% exposed to stocks and the rest in bonds, and you can't sleep at night, you should talk to your advisor about maybe lowering it to 50 or 40 or 30% to stocks. Here's the trade-off, because every decision is a trade-off. You're going to allow yourself maybe to sleep better in the near term. You will, in all likelihood, not improve your long-term returns, in fact, just the opposite. What is likely to happen is that you will hurt your long-term returns. Now, that might be a fair trade-off for you. If you can't sleep at night because you can't handle this volatility, which comes and goes periodically, uh, we actually had a long bull market leading up to this. That was out of the ordinary. We typically have bear markets uh, every three years or so. So if you can't sleep at night, what you're learning is 
you shouldn't have the exposure to stocks that you have now. And that's the same, that's true going forward. If you're able to weather this, you will come out of it the other side as we have in all of the past instances that we've shown, and you'll do very well. So it's really a learning experience. If I can't sleep at night, I can't handle the volatility. I've got to back off, but I have to stay there. You can't ratchet up your stock exposure when the market rallies because this will happen again and you'll get in this vicious cycle of moving money and it's very tax inefficient, cost inefficient, et cetera. If you look at this slide in front of you, you can see there's always a reason not to invest. It's human nature during these difficult times to feel your losses, feel your fears, worse than you feel your gains or worse than you feel good things. It's just in our nature to worry more in the midst of these things. So if you take yourself back to 9-11, if you take yourself back to the Great Recession, the market crash of 08, the same panic, the same feeling of dread, the same feelings were being felt then. And uh, we're talking uh, several thousand points ago in the respective averages, the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So any of you can look at this slide and see, well, there's always a reason for me not to invest, yet the market seems to do what it does. Remember what a stock market is. It's not a reflection in the long term of the news headlines. Certainly the headlines in the short term impact it. But in the long term, a market is a reflection of the fortunes of the underlying companies that make up that market. If those companies are going to grow over time, the market will go up over time. It's just not in a straight line. So we would tell people, talk to your advisor. Um, uh, we we're getting more calls uh, this time around of should I consider investing capital I have on the sidelines? Should I consider ratcheting up my equity exposure? So on the one hand, it's gratifying to see people are, are not panicking, uh, uh, not, not symmetry investors, and, and thinking that way. That's a good way to think. But the same rule applies. You, you don't want to ratchet up your equity exposure um, uh, unless you're willing to stay there and uh, until your advisor tells you um, you need to get more conservative for some other life event, not because the market's going to change. If you do have dry powder, if you do have cash, um, it may be a good time to invest it. But understand the market can certainly go down further than it is now. Um, in 2008, nine, the stock market dropped. Uh, just about 50%, and in 2001, just about 49%. Um, we're not near there now. We're, we're year-to-date down a little over 20%, and from the peak to the trough, about 30%. So as bad as this feels, it's, it's not nearly as bad as those two recent periods, although it could get there, no doubt. Um, here's a great quote by Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard. He's my hero uh, in this business. Um, uh, we do a lot of business with Vanguard, as many of you know from looking at your accounts. Uh, your success in investing depends in part on your character and guts and in part on your ability to realize at the height of ebullience and, and the depth of despair alike, this too shall pass. Um, a quote that's not on the screen I'll also use, it's attributed to Warren Buffett. And uh, I've heard Mr. Buffett joke that he wishes half the uh, quotes attributed to him, he actually said, uh, but I think he did say this one in one of his letters to shareholders. When I'm, uh, I'm fearful when others are greedy and I'm greedy when others are fearful. Uh, it's, it's very quaint to say buy low and sell high. It's very difficult to do. So until uh, you can figure out a foolproof way to do that, we believe you should be fully invested uh, at all times and uh, stay the course. And, and just your stock to bond ratio is the most important decision you'll make, not when to get in and when to get out. It's easy to get out of a bear market. Uh, as uh, Dana alluded to earlier, it's far more difficult to understand when to get back in. So you focus on those things you can control. Uh, work with your financial advisor. Um, always re re refer back to your financial plan in times like this, because the financial plan, when the market is not volatile, uh, is uh, can sometimes be a boring process. Uh, many of us know we should go through it, and, and kudos to you who go through this. But uh, the plan becomes vitally important and very uh, valuable in times like this. I don't want to panic. I don't want to make the wrong decision at the wrong time because we, we tend to make emotional decisions at times like these. And where our money's concerned, an emotional decision is the worst thing you can do. 
And we look to the financial plan to show that uh, my asset allocation, whatever it might be, um, was suitable six months ago. So it's suitable now. Diversification is the only free lunch in investing. Are there strategies out there that other managers use to try to minimize the downside? Sure. Um, and we're not here to uh, judge whether they're valuable or not, but we can tell you they all cost money. Any money you spend in the investment process is money that comes out of your return. So if you're pursuing a strategy in addition to that with symmetry, that you pursue with symmetry, and it has downside protection, uh, understand you're paying for that and it comes out of your return of the long run. Diversification costs nothing. Uh, you control the expenses you pay. Uh, we all are focused in our industry now on being as low cost as possible. And that's good for the consumer and that's money back in your pocket. You can control to a large extent taxes. Uh, uh, we are a very tax efficient methodology uh, uh, to our investing because once again, uh, it's what you keep, uh, not necessarily what you earn. And this final bullet on this slide uh, speaks volumes. It's easy for us to tell you to be disciplined and stay the course. We understand that. It's harder to do it. Uh, but as I've said earlier, uh, I've been through this uh, more times than I can remember in my industry. Uh, every time it comes out the same way. Uh, this is a very resilient country, a very resilient economy. It's driven by an entrepreneurial spirit. And it's driven by companies uh, that are uh, exceptionally disciplined and uh, they go through these periods and they come back strong. Uh, I would never want to bet against this economy or this country. Um, the data we led off with, the first slide shows you why. The market goes up 80% of the time over the long run. Uh, it generates approximately 10% annualized returns. This is the volatility you must withstand in order to capture that return. Thank you, Pat and Dana, uh, and thank all of you for joining us on the call. Hopefully this has been useful for you and additive to addressing some of your questions. Uh, we stand ready to continue the dialogue if you need or like to. Uh, please, by all means, do contact your financial advisor and, and uh, have them reach out to us. We're happy to have ongoing conversations with any and all of you. Again, thank you very much. Please be safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones and we will look to continue to partner with you in the years ahead. Thanks.